Marvel's Legendary is a deck building game based off the Marvel comics, which I love and adore to play. And of course, with the rise in popularity of the live action movies, it is no surprise that the Marvel Studios counterparts of the heroes would join the Legendary lineup. That said, the first time they appeared was with the legendary Marvel Studios base set, which was a bit of a disappointment. Instead of having unique cards based off the movie counterparts, it just copy and pasted their versions from the core set. That said, it does seem that Upper Deck has learned their lesson. With the two expansions that have been based off movies afterwards, one based off the Spider-Man movies, and the one we're going to be looking at now, Marvel Studios Guardians of the Galaxy, have complete new cards focusing on the movie counterparts rather than copying those heroes' previous appearances. Let's see if it's enough to warrant your interest rather than the disappointment that was the original Marvel Studios core set. Now, this comes with five fun heroes, all based on the Guardians of the Galaxy. Of course, we have our classics, Drax, Gamora, Mantis, who's a bit newer, Star-Lord, and Rocket and Groot. They come with a couple of returning abilities, one of which actually first appeared in the original Guardians Legendary expansion, but a couple of new powers as well. First off, we have Excessive Violence. This one actually appeared from the Deadpool set. Pretty much, you may spend one extra attack when killing something to trigger Excessive Violence. Then, of course, we've got Excessive Kindness now. This is the opposite. It's new. You may spend an extra star resource when purchasing to trigger that. So, two powers very similar, but an interesting twist on the other. We've got artifacts returning. Now, artifacts were from the original Guardian set when they first introduced. Unlike many other cards, once played, they go to your discard pile, artifacts stay out. This introduced triggered artifacts. Pretty much these artifacts have something that will make them trigger, usually giving you a benefit. And Star-Lord, of course, is the one loaded with the most of these artifacts just like the original Legendary expansion. Now, the other thing that is not new that is in this set is dual cards. You can see each group has their own style of pairing here. I'm pulling them all, oop, all up. The pairings here, I will say, for the most part, are pretty good. There are some of them that are just obvious. I mean, Groot and Rocket, literally the group is both of them, so it makes sense they're the split. Drax, on the other hand, I really feel like... <laughs> His split cards were forced. His split from the characters, two characters from the first movie who, I mean, I vaguely remember them, but they're not enough. I don't think they're like, oh yeah, they had a very close connection with Drax. They felt like they had to force getting two cards in every group, which I think they didn't have to do, but it's not the like the worst thing in the world. You may notice that the style here is that it's going to have the picture still from the movie, but it's going to tell you very clear which movie it's from because... They want you to make sure you know this one's from the first Guardians of the Galaxy. This is one of the issues I had with the original. I mean, it's I guess it's good in the sense that they're keeping, I guess, it connected so it looks good. But I'd rather, I don't need to see these movie titles. I think if they were even smaller in the corner or something, that would have been fine. It just, I feel it's already an issue with the stills, which I can go on about, but... It's just something that annoys me. Now, as for the stills, I will say compared to the original studio one, I like these a lot better because since they're building it off of new cards rather than what was already printed, it's a lot easier to make a card. For example, actually, no, Gamora has a good one. This one's called Retractable Sword. They take a scene where she's actually holding the sword. There's much less, I think, trying to find the frame that might be good enough for a card title because they weren't thinking about the movies when they printed the original Star-Lord. Now, what about these groups? Well, Drax really focused on the excessive violence. I know that's a very big shocker. As Mantis, I'm going to just put these two together, focuses a bit more on excessive kindness. I think these two keywords work really well because there are plenty of times, if you've ever played any deck building game, honestly, that has some sort of buying power, attack power, that you end up with maybe sometimes one extra and a way for you to actually reward you for using it or for you to think about, is it worth it that I split up and just get that highest kill or do I go for something a little weaker to get that excessive violence or excessive kindness. And I like that. I feel like it adds a lot, gives more to the player without like removing options from them. Now, Gamora is all about drawing, but I felt like a couple of times there wasn't too much draw from other people. I think Star-Lord is the only one. Well, Drax has some too, but it's very conditional and Star-Lord, all the other draw is very conditional. So I wasn't as happy with that, but 
I think if you have some other guys, you should get to see a bit more action, which I actually enjoy because I think the better that cards can mix with other groups, the more that you can have fun with just mixing and seeing different interactions and what crazy combos can come out. Star-Lord was probably, for me, the weakest of the bunch. The reason behind it is he has a lot of artifacts, which were pretty strong, and I really like them. But the way that most of his work were they triggered whenever you played an artifact. And because of that, once you got a bunch of his cards out, they just sort of sat there. They don't go back to your discard. There's one Star-Lord card that lets you discard an artifact, but it's rare and in between, and it only gives a one bonus. So it wasn't something I really enjoyed about his play style. That said, there is the throne artifacts. I think that changes his style completely since you're already throwing so many on your own would make his artifacts much stronger when mixed with that. But in terms of just with the cinematic cards, I unfortunately right now think he was the the most disappointing for me. Finally, Groot and Rocket, or sorry, Rocket and Groot. I enjoyed in particular this card. This is one the one rival. While Selfish and Selfless added a very interesting take of whether you interact with their opponents. Tricky and simple, really nice regardless of who's playing, what cards you're getting. I feel like this worked really well in being an easy card that can mix with almost any group out there. In fact, most of the Rockin' and Groots are pretty nice. They have another split that gives both excessive violence and kindness. They have, of course, Baby Groot in there as well. So I feel this... The Rocket and Groot group are honestly the best mixing, not because like Star-Lord, I think, really wants to be with the throne weapons. You know, Gamora is going to be rewarding with people who can draw cards. They just, I think, are going to fit anywhere. So this one is, I think, the best in terms of mixing. Mantis and Drax have, I think, the excessive violence and kindness is way mechanic I really enjoy. And unfortunately, the artifacts, which I usually love from Star-Lord, don't work as well, especially within this set. And Gamora just needs a bit more backup to really show her stuff. We're not just here to talk about heroes. We've got villains as well. We've got two villain groups as well as two masterminds now the villain group we have ravagers these are interesting because they pretty much have an ability called command both of these have ability called command but the ravagers pretty much fight over command of the group it's whoever's the left most gets triggers their command powers the same goes for the followers of ronin the difference being they want to be commanded so like this one wants to command but others will will wish to be commanded as well. Now, the two masterminds, Ronin has an interesting thing where if you've ever played Legendary before, usually when you defeat them, you reveal one of these cards on the back, you usually give you a reward, and you put in your victory pile for points. Instead, you get a reward, but then it's actually an artifact that he captures, in which case, next time you defeat him, you're going to get this in addition to the reward on here, which then he now captures that one, making a weird, interesting chain of how his power curve works. Ego, on the other hand, is a very interesting mastermind. He pretty much is powered up by the number of spaces in the city. So a lot of times, whenever he initiates a master strike, he's gonna increase the city size. And what you're gonna need to do is every time you beat him, tends to reduce the city size and he'll slowly move across or move back open. And you just have to try to get him down that way instead of the usual complete and defeat all his cards. Because if it's cards, shuffle back into the pile. I think that makes perfect sense considering he is the planet. So you're actually fighting the space. And the smaller the planet is, the weaker he is. So it's a challenging one, but one that I enjoyed, well, losing to mostly. But nonetheless, I thought was a really fun mastermind. Now, as for the scheme twist, they come with a couple that are um, relatively interesting. Some of them feel a little basic. This one feels a bit more if you want a competitive game. And the awesome mixtape is fun because it pretty much just throws in a lot more cards. It's, if you ever want to be like, man, I just wish I could put a little bit of everything. The mixtape one is the one you're going to want because it puts in more heroes. You put in more villains. You put in half from different groups. And of course, I think right now with the current movie lineup coming up, we have a very good candidate of who you should throw in as some of your extra hero groups with your guardians. Now, that is the expansion and focus on two Marvel movies. Now, in terms of what I think are better, I'm glad that they're really trying to be like, all right, we have some, we're going to take some returning powers and we're going to make new cards, though. So when instead of being like, how can we fit, take that worded card we had already printed before, we're going to be like, all right, Drax is going to be someone we know who acts like this. We now have a keyword called excessive violence that fits for him. So why don't we give it to him and we'll find stills in the movie. And there's still sometimes it does feel a little 
force then that just becomes from when you take movie stills versus a piece of art i feel it's much harder because movies aren't when the director is filming the movie he's not being thinking like all right now this is the shot we're going to use for your big card in the next legendary expansion so make sure you pose this way you know so it's much harder but I'm a bit more forgiving on this set. In terms of the abilities, the new one, Excessive Kindness, really like it. I really hope both Excessive Kindness and Violence, Violence is not new, but I'm putting them together, will see repeated more. I do like artifacts. I think the triggering need to be mixed with some other things. And I do wish they had the power-up tokens from the original Guardians set. The original Guardians Marvel set is probably one of the best one out there. And there are, like I said, the fact that Star-Lord has most of the artifacts, there are nods to it. But I don't think it's going to be the one where like, oh, this is the cinematic version e equal. This one has a lot of good things going for it, but I don't think enough at the very least for me to praise it as much as that. Now, when it comes to expansions, instead of doing crits and misses, I like to do a scale of great weight or hate, pretty much how much I think it impacts the base game and whether it's something you should run out immediately, maybe you can wait a little bit on, or I really didn't like anything of this. In this case, I'm leaning more towards weight than anything else. And honestly, the big reason is that this is the cinematic version of the cards. I am not the biggest fan of how they look. And in particular, if you put them out against some of the other cards from the original legendary line with more comic art, it tends to not mix as well. This is something that just tends to bother me a bit more. And if you're in the same boat as me, then it's going to be the kind of thing that maybe rubs you a little bit the wrong way. And while I love actually some of the things in here, I don't think it's enough to be similar to the original Guardians of the Galaxy expansion, which I think is a must buy. Now, if you don't mind it or you only collect the cinematic universe, this is obviously going to lean much more towards the great side. In particular, one, if you only collect cinematic, you don't have many cards for you to use. Now, for anyone who doesn't matter and just collects everything, you're going to get everything. You're going to have to decide whether this is an expansion you're willing to pick up. Do you have no problem with the cinematic versions of these cards, or is that actually a plus for you? I'd love to hear all your thoughts on this are. If you had the chance to play this, which groups do you like more? Am I wrong that somehow, which has happened before, especially with Smash Up, that the triggered artifacts from Star-Lord are really overpowered and I'm just somehow used it completely wrong. Do you have a preferred villain group or certain heroes you choose to mix with these guys? I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. Until then, I'm Will, and this has been Roll for Crit.